lured someone out of his bed and opened a doorway huh? to my workshop. <laughs> I do not know if the mirror was being mischievous <laughs> or malicious. Love is good. And I've been told love is kind, but love is also dangerous. The problem with opening your heart to something is you also open the possibility for it to be broken. Everyone who loves video games has had one break their heart, and for a lot of Nintendo fans, this is one of those games. They'll tell you it's a game that failed to meet high expectations. It's a game with a lot more lowlights than highlights. It's a game that swung and missed when its system needed a home run. It's a game called... Well, it's, uh, it's nice of Mario to interrupt there, but he's right. The Nintendo Icon's 2002 GameCube debut is eerily similar to his Disney counterpart's epic Wii release, both in terms of its design and gameplay, as well as its reputation among gamers. Of course, the tale of mice and plumbers begins with the obvious. Super Mario Sunshine and Epic Mickey are both three-dimensional platformers with a unique emphasis on affecting your environment by spraying liquid. Mario's water pack was a permanent power-up that allowed him to cleanse his surroundings of a viscous paint, and Mickey's brush allowed him to erase and repair entire sections of his world with both paint and thinner. The paint and spray concepts are very similar, and so are the premises. Both games put a familiar character, indeed an icon with a familiar universe, into a very unfamiliar setting. For Mario, it's Isle Delfino, a tropical paradise far from his mushroom kingdom. Mushrooms and Goombas are replaced with palm trees and sunsets, an aesthetic you wouldn't normally associate with any plumber, let alone Mario. As for Mickey, well, he's in a very similar situation in Epic Mickey. In fact, just as the two games are built around spray mechanics, their entire aesthetic approach is to place two of the most recognizable brands on the planet into very unrecognizable worlds. The design similarities between Sunshine and Epic Mickey also carry over into the situational as well. Speaking of aesthetics, these are two of the most beautiful games on their platforms, each pushing the hardware to achieve graphics and effects that others never even tried. And what's especially interesting here is that, for all their visual similarities, the games also contrast each other beautifully, with Sunshine's bright colors and sunny beaches serving as the heaven to Epic Mickey's dark and twisted hell. But speaking of hell, that's a place a lot of people unfortunately compare to the experience of playing these two games, specifically as it applies to their camera. The perspective in Super Mario Sunshine was almost broken at times, and sadly, it seems Mickey didn't exactly take notes. So for all the amazing and genuinely inspired ideas in their design, a shockingly similar broken camera often leaves those ideas in the dark. This appears to be quite a predicament, Mario. A predicament indeed, and one these two creative games could never fully overcome. They both released with immense hype, one due to a waiting game, and the other due to, of all things, a magazine cover, to Nintendo systems in need of great games. But their reception was another similarity. They received mixed reviews from critics, and they polarized gamers, some of whom could see through the flaws and appreciate their unique ideas, and some of whom couldn't see anything at all. Nearly a decade separates Super Mario Sunshine and Epic Mickey, but they're also connected. They have an eerily similar feel, as well as a very similar role in Nintendo history. Now, fans may never agree on them, but one thing is certain. These are artistically daring games from two of the world's most beloved characters, but by allowing their admitted flaws to obstruct their beauty, Many people missed some of their most magical moments yet. 